Um, it gives me great, great pleasure in introducing Jason here, who I've been working with now for two and a half years, I think, Jason, and um, who has taken this in a much better way than I could do. He's got a smile on his face all the time, whereas, whereas um, and he brings in the community in a, a fantastic way, has done great stuff with Wikidata, and I'm very, very proud that he has led Wikidata in many ways. So um, I'll end with that words. All the best, and thanks, Ewan, for everything for, for this conference. I think it's a start of something which will bind us and which will help us to know which doors to lock sometimes. Because when you bring the small languages together, we've got a bit of power and oomph. So let's use that. Jason, you want to Thank you. Thank you, Robin, for that. Um, so before I start, I want to say thank you to Ewan, to Wikimedia UK, and of course the University of Edinburgh for, for putting this event together and for giving us this platform for us all to share our experiences and, and try and secure the future of our languages and our culture um, and our heritage on Wikipedia. So today I'm going to be talking about the ways in which Wikimedia projects are helping to strengthen and preserve the Welsh language um, and how Welsh speakers are being engaged to collectively give the language and culture of Wales a stage in the digital age. And I'm going to look at how emerging technologies um, can be used to provide Welsh speakers with access to the information they're looking for in their native language. But I think in order to understand this, um, understand the motivations in Wales and the context, I'm going to give you all a bit of a history lesson um, to begin with. So Welsh actually emerged as a language um, around the 6th century from Britonic, uh, the ancient Celtic language which was spoken by the, the first inhabitants of Britain. And initially, there was a strong oral tradition amongst the Celts and the early Welsh. They didn't like writing things down. But by the 9th or 10th century, manuscripts began appearing. And we saw the first examples of written Welsh literature. So if a surviving 13th century manuscript actually contains what we believe is the oldest piece of Welsh literature, a poem called Erga Dovin. And this is thought to have been composed as early as the 6th or 7th century. And it's the story of 300 warriors from all over Britain who met together. They feasted for an entire year and then unsurprisingly lost a battle. <laughs> and this feast was held at Manovog's Hall at a place called Dean Aidin, which everyone believes is Edinburgh here in Scotland. So much of the early literature of Wales was actually written down by monks in the religious houses. Uh, but following the dissolution of the monastery, um, it came down to the gentry and the, the nobility of Wales to actually collect and save this, this literature and preserve it for future generations. In the 16th century, we saw the translation of the Bible into Welsh. We saw the first printed books published in Welsh. But Welsh culture and language hasn't had an easy ride over the years. So in 60 AD, the Romans murdered the last of the Druids on Anglesey and burnt their sacred groves. In 601, the Anglo-Saxon king Ethelfrith is said to have slaughtered 1,200 monks at Bangor Sakoid, a monastery that was noted for preserving and recording Welsh literature. Later, Owen Glyndwr had a vision for independent Welsh language universities, but that dream died when he was defeated. Even in the 19th and 20th century, children were punished for speaking Welsh in school, as Robin has also mentioned, the Welsh not.
So, campaigners have fought hard to actually secure Welsh to get it to be recognised as an official language. And in 1967, an act was passed that actually led to governments and councils producing content in Welsh for the first time. We started to see more bilingual road signs. And the people of Wales were granted the ability to testify in Welsh in court. And this was in 1967. This isn't that long ago. And the Welsh Language Act of 1993 finally gave Welsh language equal status to English in the public sector. Okay, so the Welsh language, the Welsh have struggled against oppression through the centuries and the language has been the thing that's binded them and it's been a symbol of Welsh identity. So Welsh has survived, but largely it's down to the will and determination of the people. And it's that will and determination that led to the foundation of the Welsh language Wikipedia in 2003. And today, Wikipedia is the most viewed Welsh language website. It's probably the biggest single corpus of Welsh literature ever created. So our Welsh language Wikipedia editors today are the modern day equivalents of the bards and the monks, and the antiquarians and the activists who've secured the language over the centuries. So tens of thousands of contributors have helped to create the 90,000 articles that we've got on the Welsh Wikipedia. And with around 700,000 Welsh speakers, that's roughly one article for every eight Welsh speakers, which is a pretty impressive ratio, actually. If you look at English, there's one article for every 66 speakers of the language. Um, in French, you've got one article for every 44 speakers. And even the wonderful Catalonian Wikipedia, there's one article for every 20 speakers. The very few languages actually boast a ratio as good as, as ours here in Wales. Where the Welsh Wikipedia needs more work um, is when we look at the amount of content in each article. For example, both English and Catalan articles about Welsh people have more than twice the content than the articles in the Welsh language. So there's lots for us to do. So people power is always going to be at the core of the Welsh Wikipedia. And at the National Library of Wales, we've been trying to nurture this people power and support Wikipedia editors. We've been releasing thousands of digital images. We've been releasing data. We've been facilitating events. We've held 20 editathons. Um, and we've embedded Wikipedia into our volunteer service at the National Library. We've currently got 31 volunteers who have taken part in Wikipedia-based projects, people that come in every week and edit Wikipedia. And just last night I had an email, there are two more volunteers who want to work in translating um, English articles to Welsh. So all this has led to thousands of new and improved articles. And we're working with universities in Wales to try and embed Wikipedia into courses to, to encourage them to contribute more to Wikipedia. And as we've heard from Robin, there's, there's this increasing interest um, from institutions throughout Wales in having Wikipedians in residence and being involved somehow in, in the Wiki project. The Welsh Government has a long-term strategy for the language and they want to see a million Welsh speakers by 2050. So more Welsh speakers are going to need Welsh services. They're going to need Welsh language sources of information. And Wikipedia can be the platform that provides that information. If we don't nurture our Wikipedia, people will simply switch to English or another language in order to get the information they need, because it's easy. And digital service giants like Google and Microsoft will take note. If we have an active community and we're increasing the amount of content in Welsh, they're more likely to increase um, the, their efforts to support the Welsh language. So there's a knock-on effect. And I think one of the main reasons that our young people 
even from Welsh-speaking backgrounds, tend to drift towards English. It's just the exposure that they have to the English language through TV, film, music, advertising, video games. A lot of children these days spend most of their time on YouTube. But I think with Wikipedia, we have an opportunity to provide Welsh speakers with access to relevant, up-to-date information in their own language. And surely if we can do that, they're more likely to keep using the language. So improving Welsh Wikipedia actually aligns nicely with government policy for securing the future of the language. So editor contributions to the Welsh Wikipedia are currently leading to between roughly two and 3,000 new articles every year on the Welsh Wikipedia. But we could be doing a lot more. There's places like Estonia, Catalonia and the Basque Country have far more editors per million speakers than we do in Wales. And let's not forget the, the actual process of contributing to Wikipedia um, is a great way of engaging people with the language. So we need to grow this community. However, if we're thinking big and we want to grow the Welsh Wikipedia by tens of thousands of articles a year rather than just thousands, how, how are we going to do that? So for me, there are three key areas. And we have to address all three in order to achieve our goals. So the first we've discussed is people power. The second is open access. This is about policy. Wales has hundreds, if not thousands, of content producers who are producing Welsh language content, from the government to examining bodies, news outlets, publishers, cultural institutions. And many of these producers are funded, at least in part, by the Welsh Government. So if there is no obvious commercial interest with this content, it should be released wherever possible so that it can be recycled, reused, promoted um, through the Welsh Wikipedia so that it can be freely and easily accessed by everyone. Take Welsh examining bodies, for example. They spend thousands developing reliable Welsh language resources for teachers and pupils. And these are used in the classroom. But I've got kids, and I know they teach them in the classroom, and then they are given homework. They're told, go home and research this subject further online. So the kids come home, they open the laptops, they swipe their tablets, and where do they end up? Wikipedia. So would it not make more sense for examining bodies to release this Welsh language content openly so that Wikipedians can ensure that curriculum subjects are properly represented in Welsh on Wikipedia? Another good example of open practice was, hi um, open practice was highlighted during the recent Wikipop project, which I'm going to talk more about in a moment. About 10 years ago, the BBC produced a website with hundreds of biographies of Welsh bands. And over time, they stopped contributing to the project, funding dried up, um, and the website was eventually archived. No one could find the content anymore. So they actually actively released this content to the Wikipedia community in Wales. And now all of those articles have been adapted and absorbed into the Welsh Wikipedia so they're given value once again. And a lot of these bands don't exist anymore. And without that record, we wouldn't have any, any way of recording and, and learning about these bands. So then the third pillar is data. And I'm going to be talking quite a bit um, about how we can use data to improve our Wikipedias. And data is everywhere. Everything we do generates data in work, in our personal lives. There's this huge amount of data, and, and that can be utilised. So, the Wikipop project. So this was a project funded by the Welsh Government um, in collaboration with Wikimedia UK. And the National Library of Wales ran this. It was a three-month project um, based on this three-pillar principle that I've just talked about. And we looked at all the main categories of content on Wikipedia um, and we noticed that popular culture was one of the most viewed categories 
but it's also one of the categories with very little content. So we decided for the project we were going to focus on Welsh pop music or pop music in general. This is not the best clicker. Okay. So in three months, we managed to create nearly 800 new articles. We had 40 participants at three public editathons, and we held these around the country, and we worked in collaboration with magazines, universities, with the Welsh Music Awards, um, with the National Museum of Wales, to actually host the events and form partnerships as part of the process. We also set up a wiki project on Wikipedia itself to encourage established editors to contribute remotely to the project and to try and encourage people to continue using the project and contributing once the three months was up. And during the project, we actually we were getting two or three new articles a day from established editors contributing um, through the online project. So we had people power on our side. So next is open access. We worked with the BBC, with other media companies, with Bangor University, Coleg Cymraeg, Sign Records, Ercelar, and many other content producers in Wales to actually release existing content on an open license. And I was actually really surprised by how many people were ready to share content with us. And on several occasions, people actually contacted us and said, hey, we've heard about this project, we've got some photographs or we've got some old articles that we want to contribute um, openly for the project. And for me, one of the, the big outcomes of this project in terms of open access was the collaboration with Sign Records, which is a Welsh music label. They've actually released 7,000 30-second sound clips to Wikimedia Commons for us to use, as well as 500 album covers that's a 30-second clip of almost every song in their catalogue. And as far as we know, no other record company in the world has ever done anything like this. This is a commercial enterprise, but they've seen the value of sharing openly, and we've got all this content now that we can create articles around. And what we found, as people were releasing this content to us, um, it actually motivated editors to create articles around images or around sound clips. Um, it actually acted as a stimulus for, for people to contribute to Wikipedia. So around 500 of the articles produced for this project were created semi-automatically uh, using data from Wikidata. And for those of you who might not be familiar with Wikidata, it's basically the Wikipedia of data. It's a massive linked open data database that anyone can contribute to and anyone can reuse. But the crucial thing about it is that it's multilingual. Every item of data in Wikidata can be described in any language. And around a million and a half of the data items on Wikidata already have a Welsh description, thanks to the work of volunteers. So we were able to extract data about bands and singers in Welsh from Wikidata. So then we then created templates for various sentences that we could fill with this data. So the data is the, the red items there, um, and we, we built templates around that. And using this technique, you can create hundreds or even thousands of articles for a particular subject at the same time. So if we look at the rest of this article, the image, the info box, the members of the band um, are all created from Wikidata. And Robin mentioned Wiki Wikipedia uh, Wikidata lists. And the discography here that lists all the albums and the singles that a band has produced is created using Wikidata lists. And this means that it's live Wikidata. So if Ramstein were to reduce, produce a new single or an album. I, ho I hope they don't, but <laughs> if they were to do that, the, ch <laughs> the chances are that will be added to Wikidata. 
The chances of an editor going, oh, I must update that on the Welsh Wikipedia, are possibly more slim. But that will automatically update in our articles um, because it's a live feed from Wikidata. And this technology helps keep our Wikipedia manageable. When you have a small editor community, we don't want to just dump tens of thousands of new articles into it without some kind of plan for managing that content. And sometimes the plan will involve community projects, but as technology develops, it's increasingly possible to keep articles accurate and up to date um, using data and automatic processes. And these automatically created articles, this is, a, this is a short article, it's a stub, but it provides basic facts about a topic in Welsh rather than people having to go to the English article. And the idea is that these stubs encourage editors to come along and contribute something else, to, to put more into the articles. So these aren't a finished product, they're simply a leg up for editors, a template for them to, to improve the content further. So, looking to the future. I think that the importance of data in our Wikipedias is going to grow and grow. And there are already discussions within Wikimedia about creating structured data for all the images and for citations. And I believe that it won't be long before Wikipedia is able to automatically generate articles on the fly in our chosen language and tailored to our specific needs. And we can already see, uh, we can begin to see how this might be possible on the Welsh Wikipedia. So our Wikipedia is one of the first in the world to trial a new feature called the article placeholder. Um, data. So if you search for something on Welsh Wikipedia and there is no article, um, you will be offered to view data on the subject. And you see, you find a page like this, where all the information is presented. And this all comes from Wikidata. And of course, where it's available in Welsh, it'll be displayed in Welsh here. So firstly, users have access to a whole load more information through the medium of Welsh, thanks to this feature. And Welsh Wikipedia can generate these pages for three million subjects. Secondly, these placeholders invite editors to actually turn this data into an actual article with all the, the basic information they need to, to start an article there for them in one place on the screen. And 10,000 of these placeholders have now been indexed by Google and people can discover them through a Google search. So we're waiting for the stats to start coming in to see whether people are actually using these and we're really interested to see how many hits these attract through Google. But if we think about this, we've got 90,000 articles in Welsh. This tool can create 3 million of these pages. So what if this data could be presented as structured sentences using a technique similar to the, the technique I described that we've used for the Wikipop project? We could essentially go from 90,000 articles to 3 million overnight. Uh, so this is an example of a, an article created using another tool called Reasonator. And again, this just uses Wikidata, just like the placeholders. But in English, at least, they've taught it to automatically structure the data into sentences. And I'm sure you'll agree this doesn't look or feel unlike an encyclopedic entry. Yeah, <laughs> there are issues. <laughs> Which leads me to my next sentence. The technology is nearly there. <laughs> um, so, whilst I believe it's crucial that we continue to invest in human editors and we embed Wikipedia into our communities, into our schools, and we embed this open access ethos into our society, we should also be creating and sharing Welsh language data, developing machine translation techniques and language syntax technology. And by doing this, we're going to be better placed to take advantage of Wikipedia 2.0.
and to secure the future of Welsh as a digital language. Thank you very much. Uh, so we've now got about eight minutes before tea and coffee time, so uh, well played to all our speakers for allowing us not to run over time. So we're now going to invite Robin to join us back on the stage, and uh, if you have any questions for either of our speakers, they will be happy to answer them. I'm assuming you're happy. Yeah, that's fine. That's you can, yeah, yes, very happy. Okay. So, um, Lorna... So, Hello, I'm, I'm, I'm Mina from Greece, and uh, it's all very interesting. There's just one thing that nobody mentioned. What about the community? What about the village pump? Are there conflicts? Are there like deletion wars? Are there people that are saying this shouldn't be on Wikipedia? Uh, people trying to take control, because this is an issue on many Wikipedias. I don't know if you have that issue in Welsh Wikipedia. We have it on Greek Wikipedia. So, lots of people wanting to contribute, but they're, they're stopping because there's too much conflict in the... Uh, there's no conflict on the Welsh one. We're all one small family. You're happy we, people. <laughs> no, hardly any. No, no. No bullying. No, yeah, very happy. We could do with more, we could do with more um, female editors. Um, if two people disagree, one gives in to the other. And we get on with it. I, I can't remember any fighting uh, at all. Alwyn, we're, we're, am I right? Oh, you're right, yeah. <laughs> on the English Wikipedia, yeah. on the other hand, things <laughs> are very different. I don't know how we won't get into that. Look, there must be, a, there must be some, the, the lady up there must have something, the village punk, she says. Uh, I mean, um, the, what is the essential difference between the, uh, the, the Welsh... Um, paradise situation <laughs> and the Greek uh, sort of <laughs> nightmare perhaps. Um, there must be something underlying it, wasn't there, that will prompt the question. I think there's obviously the larger the community the more risk there is um, for conflict and I think that might be something we have to face as our community grows but I think on the whole sort of going back to the sort of context in Wales and everyone sort of working towards this common goal of, of providing more articles in the language and securing the future of the language and providing information for Welsh speakers um, sort of drives the community and so we're sort of working towards this common goal and that reduces um, the conflict. At the beginning um, when we placed Wikidata lists on uh, Wikipedia Cymraeg they were going into main space on the articles on the proper articles not themselves now and that wasn't a non-English Wikipedia. When I did that, it was taken down immediately. Oh no, this thing called Wikidata is very iffy. So they took it down. And they're still not there on Wikipedia, Seasnick, the English Wikipedia, or the French, I don't think. But um, we had two editors who also edit on Wikipedia, Seasnick, who brought it to our attention. Um, this is a bit iffy. We're not doing it on the English one. And immediately the community said, well, we're not an English Wikipedia. We've got our own rules. I think it's good. We explained to them the, um, how Wikidata was monitored and so on, and where the, where the data came from, and it was accepted. So one side, after educating a little bit, stood down. So there was no conflict. We've got a cafe on the Welsh one. We like a a cup of tea. So we've got a cafe, but on the Breton one, they have a pub. It's a little bit more honest. And well, that's where they meet. And well, you've got a power powerhouse? Power? It's the market. It's, it's the, the market. Wonderful. And everything's fresh. Um, living in a small village has no pub and no cafe. Um, referencing is an issue for me. I've been collecting local history in this little village for years. I put some stuff on Wikipedia and they get a big blank book telling me, oh, we need referencing. Well, I'm the only person who's got the reference. Yeah. And the other person who's probably dead who gave me that story. So I think, you know, Wikipedia needs to look yeah. at this issue of genuine stories coming from the community, organic stories that get put on with no trouble whatsoever. And that's probably because I am a genuine person, like me. Yeah. Okay. This, this is something 
that it would be good to discuss at some point today. And it's an issue that I've come across um, with, with contributors saying, I've, I've got this knowledge, but I've, I've got no way of proving it. I've got no way of citing it. And I don't really know what the solution is. I think it is important that we're able to show where information has come from. That, that is the whole ethos of, of Wikipedia, is that you, you cite reliable sources. But it could be that you write an article for a local journal, you then, you then have a reliable source because that's been edited, it's been moderated. Um, even if you cite your own article in Wikipedia then. But, but I have references to the persons who gave you those sources. Mm. But we have our own journal, you see, in our project. Yeah. Yeah. So what I suggest is that we can simply write our knowledge into our own journal and then cite it in Wikipedia. Yeah, and we, we've done that. The problem here, you see, is that these three gentlemen are authors. They're on radio all the time. They're the late naturalists. Did I get it right? <laughs> 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 so they can't, uh, on the English Wikipedia, they can't um, reference their own stuff. But um, if it's published in other work, uh, in, a, in a book, then they can reference that book. And Tomia, for example, has put all of his work on Wikipedia. He doesn't like doing the coding, so he said, take that, use it. Tell me an open license. And an editor comes along and copies it and pastes it into one of the species. And that's beautiful. So um, it is difficult to, when you haven't published something, if you need to tell people where it came from. So as Duncan mentioned, the way around that is to say, well, my name is, and so on, so that we know it's a, he's a real person, he's an author, and this is the first place for it to be published. We have different rules on the Welsh Wikipedia. Every author is notable. Every person who's recorded a song on an album is notable, and so they are, given pages on them. So those rules are very, very different. Um, it's one, the comment and the question. Um, I'm going to come across as terribly grumpy. Possibly Welsh is just in a Goldilocks zone where it's got enough editors to keep down edit boards and stuff like that, but not too many to increase the edit board. But our experience on the Scottish Daily Wikipedia is that um, this, if you have a very small wiki project, you can attract, well, not as and that can create an awful lot of friction in a very small community. The question, the grumpy question that I have is, um, do you have any, is there any data on click throughs As in, do you know how effective stubs are? We've had this discussion a lot on the Scottish Daily Wikipedia about what the point is of having a lot of very tiny articles on places in American cities nobody's ever heard of. Um, do we know anything about how many people go on to Welsh stuff and then more or less immediately move on to the English one? That's, yeah, good question. As far as nutters go, um, other than myself and Robin, that there aren't really any that I know of on Welsh Wikipedia. But with the, the stubs, I'm, I'm not aware of any sort of big sort of studies that have been done into it. I'm not sure on statistics. I think what's important if you are going to do stubs is that it's information that is relevant. It's information that you can prove people have been looking for. With, with Wikipop, for example, we, we, we studied the Welsh Wikipedia and said, well, what, in, what kind of content are people looking for? People were looking for popular culture content. They wanted more information about up-to-date bands. And therefore, we thought, well, in, in this case, then, s small stub articles about popular bands is acceptable because people want that information. True, though, you know, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't speak Welsh, but stating that Rammstein is a German pop band, full stop, that's not a popular lot of informative content. Can I make yeah. something to the yeah. 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 that Gallic Wikipedia and the rest of the and I think that's the last one that goes to the chat. Yeah, well, because I'm also familiar with the edit words in the Scottish Gaelic Wikipedia, of course. Um, I, I think it's, it's a topic that uh, obviously been brought up, and I think a lot of very smaller wikis, and they should really be talking about reviving or, or creating a, a Wikipedia from scratch for small language, and I think these language disputes um, are going to become a part of that. But we have the panel at the end of the day, and perhaps we can bring these together, but it's something that, that I will be referenced to in my talk, and perhaps themed through the day, we'll, we'll see different sides of, of, that, of that issue. 
Well, um, just to sort of flag that Susan's talk is happening in the 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock session, so we better uh, break just now so people can have a wee refreshment out in the main concourse. So grab a tea or coffee, and then we have two parallel sessions downstairs in Lecture Theatre 1B and Lecture Theatre 2, directly down the stairs. So Thank you very much once again to Jason and Robin. If we could just give them one last round of applause. And let's carry on these discussions after the break. Thank you.